Uh, bill, I should say. This is the unemployment rate continues to creep up despite 10 million jobs being available in this country right now. For reaction, let's welcome in Iowa Congresswoman and House Budget Committee member Ashley Hinson. Congresswoman, so nice to have you back on. Good morning, Rob. Good to be with you. Um, could you explain to me that the bill, the $1.2 trillion vote was going to happen today. Nancy Pelosi put that off until Thursday. We know the Senate is going to vote today on refunding the, uh, so we don't have a government shutdown Thursday night. They're going to do that, refund the government today. That is not going to pass. That's what we're hearing from Mitch McConnell. When do we see a vote on this $3.5 trillion debacle? Yeah, and it's so many zeros. I think most people don't even know how much three and a half trillion dollars is. We're actually hearing it's more like four point three trillion dollars in spending. So um, at this point, it's very clear that the only thing uh, that's bipartisan about this bill moving forward is the opposition to it, which is exactly why you're seeing this crisis in the Democrat caucus. You've got progressives who are saying three and a half trillion dollars isn't enough spending. And then you've got uh, supposed moderates, I would argue that there are no moderate Democrats left in Congress, but supposed mar moderates arguing that um, they need some provisions stripped out of the bill before they'll vote for it. So obviously all that wheeling and dealing is happening. Meanwhile, you have Speaker Pelosi going out and saying, oh, let's not talk about the numbers, let's talk about values. But what I can tell you is that uh, what's clearly not being valued in all of these conversations is taxpayers. And when you look at right. the amount of spending at a time when you mentioned millions and millions of jobs are available, we need to be getting people back to work and focus on getting out of this pandemic, not spending trillions of dollars on priorities Americans don't want. We are approaching almost 19 months into the COVID-19 pandemic. If you talk to uh, your colleague uh, on the other side, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, people should be getting uh, COVID-19 benefits basically indefinitely, and we're dealing with a virus that most medical experts say is endemic, meaning it will be here in some way, shape, or form uh, indefinitely. There's no end to coronavirus. Uh, so last month, the unemployment rate went up. Uh, more people file for unemployment, but there are 10 million jobs available approximately throughout this country. W what is happening here? Yeah, well, we keep seeing those help wanted signs and windows, and now we're seeing uh, businesses saying, okay, well, we can't even be open on Tuesday because we don't have enough help. And um, I think it's systemic about uh, what you've seen is this shift towards socialism, socialism in our country. Pandemic era policies were never meant to be permanent, but what Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez wants is more dependency on government. And that's why she filed that bill to, you know, extend those pandemic unemployment benefits, the enhanced unemployment benefits. So that's exactly why I'm trying to counter what she's trying to do, put a brakes or put the brakes on uh, those plans. And um, I've introduced or I'm introducing this week the back to work plan, which basically will take a look at all of the supply chain issues, all of the unemployment issues that we're seeing in this country. And most importantly, with some of these pandemic era policies, make sure that they are efficient and not ramp it with fraud. And so that's what I'm trying to kind of counter what she's doing. And, and we're going on offense with that this week. We've never had a situation like this before where the unemployment rate is going up despite that many jobs being available. And many of those jobs are high paying jobs. Um, but this has touched every state, every small town, big city in the country. You go to restaurants, they are shorthanded. I'm in New York City, restaurants are shorthanded here. Um, and it's like that in small town America as well. Um, I, What's happening on the border, I think, is connected to this. Um, this this theory, this not theory, this premise that people are coming to America because they know they can sort of live off the dole. Uh, it, do you think that these are connected here? People are just, they've gotten comfortable over the last 18 months sitting on the couch at home. Uh, many of these people that are coming to this country, they want to come here because they know um, that a lot of what they need on a daily basis will be bought and paid for by Joe Biden. Yeah, we have a broken immigration system for sure, but it's very clear that this administration's messaging has created this surge and this crisis at the border. I was down there in April, obviously, it's been several months, and this problem has only gotten worse since then. It compounds every single month. And so, again, what we need to do is make sure we're in securing our border, first and foremost, building the wall. Um, we've been talking about all of these policies that can help uh, make sure we're uh, stemming this tide of this surge at the border, but um, the Biden administration is turning a blind eye and continues to do so. So, um, it's very clear to me that Americans are tired of it. In Iowa, we, we talked about our poll numbers. You know, uh, President Biden only right. at 31 percent approval rating in Iowa. It's because everywhere you go, people are saying we've had enough of this. Let's let's uh, get serious about these issues facing our country instead of continuing to turn that blind. Yeah, eye. people are fed up. And when it comes to the border, just I'm, I'm just wondering why these migrants uh, at the southern border, these Afghan refugees, up to 60,000, why there is no vaccine requirement. If you want to come to America, fine. We can we can get you a court appearance. We'll see. And you can have your case heard uh, before a judge. I, I want to know why it is not being mandated that every single refugee and or migrant 
get vaccinated who is eligible to be vaccinated in this country. Yeah, or at least tested, right? right? I mean, I think that's even the bare minimum. We heard Secretary Mayorkas yesterday basically punting on questions, um, you know, about what's happening at the border with these migrants coming into our country. Not only are they not COVID testing everyone before they release them, but um, they can't track them once they release them. And we've uh, got mixed messages on the numbers. So yeah. um, I think um, Americans, again, are tired of this. They want real answers and accountability from the Biden administration because we all know that it's Biden administration policies that are causing the crisis at the border and the crisis with the economy. Absolutely. Congresswoman Ashley Hinson, nice to see you again. Thanks so much for coming on. Uh, busy week on Capitol Hill. Keep us posted. Will do. Thanks, Rob. All right. Thank you. Uh, coming up next here on Wake Up America.